I want to take this bargain bin Star Wars toy and turn it into something that will hopefully terrify my players. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I am neck deep in a crazy adventure that I'm running for my players. It is a Lovecraftian terror-based nightmare. It was supposed to be a little one-shot, maybe a two-shot thing, but it's turned into a very deep and immersive, long-running thing. Well, like several sessions, but it has to come to a close eventually. And I think next session, is going to be the big epic conclusion where the party finds and faces the elder horror that's been making its way to the world that they're in. And they're going to have to fight something crazy. I need to build something terrifying for that. My buddy Wylock recently used this Star Wars toy to make some little scatter terrain. And it reminded me that I actually have one of these things that's been sitting on the shelf for quite some time since Blanco, cool dude over at Blanco, sent me this. I think this is gonna be perfect to start building with. So let's open it up and see what I have to work with and come up with a plan, because I don't yet have one. I just have a vague idea of what I'm gonna build. First thing is gonna be opening this up and seeing what we have to work with. This guy will get put aside for something different. He'll probably end up being a statue at some point. But what I care about is the weird monster. Look at all this cardboard and empty space for this tiny little toy. Ridiculous. Creepy head and a bag of tentacles. It's like looking at a wish ad. I like the idea of making some kind of portal or pit that this elder thing is crawling out of. So I think I'm gonna end up cutting this so that it can be embedded in either a pool or a portal, and then taking a whole bunch of these tentacles and having them coming out, maybe also out of the mouth. Yeah, tentacles coming out of the mouth is nice and creepy. So the big decision is, what are these things, this thing gonna be coming out of? In my head, I was originally thinking some kind of a, you know, a well or a pool with some kind of bubbling liquid would be really neat, but I've kind of done stuff like that a few times I like the idea of there being an upright wall where this thing is coming out of. So that's what I want to do. And I'm thinking I actually need two of them to make this really effective. This is going to break my rule about, you know, modular terrain and making things for one-off use, but this is the end of a, you know, several session storyline, so that's okay. What I'd like to do is build one portal thingy that is blank so that I can use that at the start of the encounter. And maybe there's a countdown timer for impending doom, and at some point I switch it out for the exact same one, but that has this creepy monster coming out of it. That's what I'm gonna do. And also, actually, the plain version will likely be reusable for other things. But that means I gotta build two, which is a lot more work, so I gotta think about a design that I can batch build in duplicate. Let's put this out of the way for a second. Some foam, and let's, let's start building. I got a pile of scrap over here. I'm gonna use this shape tool again, like I did last week, but this time I think I'm gonna be using a pentagram. Pentagram. Pentagram? That's not the right word. Pentagon. You know you have too many years with heavy metal and weird music when you call a pentagon a pentagram. Anyways, brain breaking there for a second. I think this shape will be best, but I'm gonna need a pretty big piece of foam because I want it to actually be somewhat large because this is pretty large. And because I'm gonna be making this in duplicate, I want a thick enough piece of foam that I can cut the main shapes once and then slice them down thinner. I'm gonna make it from center to here. I think that it says 60 mil. So is this 60 mil from center? Yeah, it's gonna end up giving me like a 12 centimeter-ish piece. That's pretty good, but I need a big piece of foam now that's thick. All 
All right. Again, I'm gonna use Styrodur today, but could definitely use regular pink stuff. Okay, let's see how this goes. Don't quite have enough room to be doing this. I have a bad feeling this piece of foam actually is gonna end up being too small in one direction for what I'm doing here. Hmm. I think the way I positioned the foam the first time didn't give me enough space to do what I wanna do here. Let's try that again. I'm gonna position this right in the center and hopefully that gives me enough clearance. I think I had it too close to one edge. That's better. Now I just need another one. I gotta do two things here. I gotta get rid of this weird waffle texture that's on this foam. And I wanna slice this down into two or three layers so it has a kind of stepped effect. First thing I'm gonna do is just shave down and get rid of this waffle texture on each side. And then I'm gonna split this and then I'm gonna cut down the split one smaller. Uh, I hate when that happens right in the middle of a cut like that. Now I have these two layers, but I actually want a bit of a reveal. So I'm gonna set this so I can cut the outer one smaller than the inner one. While these are gonna make up my walls, they're gonna need some kind of base to one, hold them, and also for this crazy creature to spill out onto. And in my head, I was just picturing some kind of simple stone thing, but after playing around with these two that I made, I realized it would look pretty nice if I actually made the floor the same as the wall and it was symmetrical and cool looking. So that meant I went ahead and made more. So now my duplicate is actually four and I'm going to assemble them like this. Before I do that, I wanna give everything a bit of a stone texture. I don't wanna make the same mistake I did on my dwarven pillars where I glued this together, then textured it because I couldn't hit this edge. So I'm gonna texture that, then assemble. In order to make these fit together nicely, I just shaved down what I needed on here to make that fit. If I was being more precise with thicknesses and that thickness being the same as the reveal, it would have naturally been perfect, but it wasn't. Now, looking at this and the thicknesses I have here, there's really no reason you couldn't just build this out of foam core and just make it a little bit thinner. So again, as usual, if you don't have thicker foam, don't be discouraged, just use some foam core or heck, use some cardboard. So I think what I wanna do is put a bunch of symbols on here that are gonna be calling this creature. Just to make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna do that before assembling these two pieces. I'm actually just gonna carve it with a sharp knife, make little grooves so that it's really, really visible.
Well, now that I'm thoroughly covered in little foam pieces, I have two of these complete. I decided to add, you know, a bunch of cool runes and make them continue up along the side and towards the back so that they look more interesting, I guess. But I realized that because I want to do the old switcheroo thing where I have the plain one and then the monster one, I had to kind of mimic that on the second one. I didn't have to be too perfect and copy it exactly because it's mostly going to get covered in junk, but I wanted those lines to still be there. Also, you're not going to be comparing them one to one. It's going to be one off the table and one on. So you just kind of want them to imply the same thing. Now I can move on to the fun part, placing this monstery kind of stuff onto this. Part of me is tempted to paint this first and then do it, but I think I'm going to end up adding so much material to this. There's going to need to be something to fill in between. I don't know if I'm going to use sculpt mold or like hot glue or something to build this out. So I think we're just going to build it and paint it all as one and hopefully that works out well. Okay, sometimes I try crazy things. I know some people use plastic bags to make crazy terrain. There was a video I saw years ago by a guy who used plastic bags to make all sorts of neat like cave textures and stuff. I'll see if I can track that down and put a link below. I've never tried that myself and I figured I would try to use it to sculpt around this and I think it would kind of work. It totally just melted my, uh, my foam here, which was to be expected. And I knew that going into it. I, I thought I would pay attention and that the bags would melt faster than the foam, but I got so caught up looking at the bag that I ended up not noticing how much it was distorting this and removing my texture here. I need to fill this in with something else. So I think I'm gonna break out some sculpt mold and just kind of stuff it in and plaster around it. I guess I don't really need it. I could just leave this thing the way it is, but I don't know, I sort of want to blend it a bit more and I, I don't know what I want, but I'm going to put sculpt mold on it. Sometimes when I use sculpt mold it takes a really long time to dry. I'm talking like overnight and it's supposed to dry quickly. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And my environment usually stays the same. When I mixed up this batch it was quite dry. I didn't put very much water in it, less than I felt like it needed to work with. It dried a lot quicker than usual. So I think a lot of the time I've been over hydrating it. Plenty hard, nice weight. I'm really happy with the way this is looking. I'm gonna throw Mod Podge on the foam, you know, especially crucial on this one. And I'm gonna let everything sit and dry even more overnight so that I can paint these tomorrow. All right, it is day two here now. Mod Podge, Sculpt Mold, everything is totally dry and I can move on to painting. The plain one is just gonna get a basic gray paint job, just like my Dwarven Pillars last week. Maybe I'll do a little bit of the gold so they kind of match together and I can use these in tandem in this encounter. But this guy here is gonna require some special attention. And honestly, I'm a little nervous to paint this up. This is one of those pieces where 
It would really benefit from a highly skilled paint job. Normally I don't worry about that too much, but I think on this one, my painting limitations and skills will definitely detract from how cool it could be, but I'm gonna do it anyway, and I'm gonna try to have some fun with it and just do it to the best of my ability. Like I always say, don't let your limitations or your skills set you back, just, just do stuff. There's two kind of problems here that I have to deal with. The first one is gonna be priming. So this toy plastic, it definitely needs an aerosol spray primer. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm not too worried about spraying it with the styrofoam here because I spray paint styrofoam all the time. It's okay as long as you know what you're doing, you've tested that spray paint, you know how to spray from the right distance, you're careful. And also the Mod Podge on here will give it a little bit of extra protection. But I'm really struggling with how to prime this in terms of color for this kind of creature, I think what I'd like to do is a zenithal prime. So prime it all black and then do white highlights from the top so they can just kind of glaze this with inks and washes to do a lot of the paintwork. It's a really nice and easy effect. The challenge is that this thing has all the underside of its tentacles and belly, which should be lighter than the top. Just a straight zenithal prime doesn't really make sense because I want the underside light, but I also want shadows and light from the top. So I'm gonna try something, I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm gonna spray this all out with white primer, then I'm gonna hit it with black just from the top, and then I'm gonna zenithal highlight it again from the top, and maybe, hopefully, this will give me something to work with. I have absolutely no idea, but all the fun stuff happens from experimenting. Then once I get to actually painting, I don't know what color to paint this thing. Originally when I was building it, I thought goopy, bloody red mess. That's fairly easy to do and make look cool. I have lots of stuff to use for that, but I don't know. I kind of feel like it might need something more otherworldly and not so fleshy. I tend to always gravitate towards blood. So I kind of would like to do it like a purple with a fleshy undertone or maybe like a bright neon green or something. I, I really don't know. Purple is kind of where my head's at. I think that'll look cool. I have a limited amount of purple inks and paints. I don't know if I really have the best stuff to do it with. Definitely have more variety of crazy greens, but I don't know. For now, let's just prime it and see where that leads us. turned out actually pretty decent for my first attempt at painting like this. I, I really don't paint much with an airbrush. This sort of situation where things are blending out of other things is beyond what I'm used to doing. The color ended up kind of like this maroony red with a bit of purple, which isn't what I planned, but it's okay. I, kinda, I, I like it. It's subdued. It's not too crazy. What I don't like is that it's a little bit too close to the original color of the toy, and I think it would have been better if it was something totally different, but I think this was a better bet than going like bright green or something like that. One real big mistake I made is when I was painting out the stonework first, I wasn't very careful with my brush, and there were some spots where I dabbed and hit the tentacles and stuff. I really should have taken some time to correct with some white paint so that the whole filter ink sort of thing 
really worked a lot better than it did. You know, that, that showed through and I should have taken the time to correct that. There's a few spots that have deep crevices uh, where the sculpt mold has these deep pits that are very, very white. I'm gonna go in and I'll put some wash in there later just to hide those. But what I wanna do right now is one last kind of finishing detail and that's adding some wetness, some gross, watery, slimy spit drips. For that, I'm gonna use this Vallejo water texture. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. Hot glue, even like Mod Podge, you can use UV resin, which is great because you can harden strands and make drips really easily. Water texture takes a long time to dry. I like working with this once in a while. I wanna first use it to create a little wet look on these little blistery eyeball bubble things, whatever they are. And I'm just gonna brush this on like paint to make these glossy. Really, I could use a gloss varnish for this. I could use like clear texture artist paste or something. There's lots of different things I could use for this. Today, I'm using this. And I'm making it so that the ones coming out of the mouth are distinctly wet and shiny versus the rest, which are gonna stay matte. It might look cool if I just made all of them glossy and shiny, but I'm not sure. But I also wanna make some colored kind of spit. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the ink that I had used to paint this thing and add it to the water texture. Any ink would be fine for this. Now, if you wanted to do drips, you'd have to first make some strands for this to be held to. And you can do that by making strips of this stuff on parchment paper and then peeling it off. You could use hot glue for that. Or again, UV resin would work. Dripping some on the base, which I guess is fine. Yeah, let's just add some to the base here. Let's go crazy. And I think I'm gonna call it a day. Just leave this to dry and be done with it. Uh, maybe a little bit more of this colored stuff on these eye bulbous things. I don't know, what are these? What are these? Eye bulbous pus holes? I don't know. That dried a lot faster than I thought. It actually only took like an hour, which is pretty impressive. I guess it's very thin, so that makes sense. But you know what? This definitely needs some actual drips. I gotta do it. Gonna use some UV resin. Any clear UV resin will probably do. You can check for this kind of stuff for nails, apparently. Essentially what you do is you just pull some out and make long tendrils however big or long you need them to be. And then using a UV light, you set them or cure them. And you can peel them off and place them using some more resin. Recommend wearing gloves if you can't manage to not touch the resin while you do this. Now that I have all these resin drips, I can mix up a little bit more of this water texture with my ink and cover it up to give it some color. Resin basically just acts like a little skeleton for these drips. That looks a bit better. All right, now I'm calling it done. You know, if this empty one had a little bit more weight to it, these would make an excellent set of hobby room bookends, but I'm pretty content with just having this cool piece for display and games. This is really, really neat. If you wanna make one for yourself, you're gonna need to search out one of these Star Wars toys and 
they used to be everywhere in clearance bins. I even saw them at Dollarama in Canada for like four bucks at one point last year, but I don't know if they're still kicking around. Take a look wherever you think there might be clearance toys for sale. If you can't find one, I will put a link in the video description below because they are available on Amazon for a very reasonable price that's totally worth it for making something like this, at least at the time when I'm filming this. I'm really happy with this piece. I enjoyed making it. I learned a fair bit, and I think if I were to do it again, I could do a much better job painting it next time around. So I'm gonna consider it a win just for what I learned. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section below. If you want to pick up any other tools or supplies for your own hobby needs, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page with links to all of the stuff that I use the most, information about it so you can get the right stuff. And if you enjoy these videos that I make and you want to help me keep making them each and every week, the best way you can do that is by joining the Black Magic Craft Fellowship via Patreon. The support there goes a long way to helping me make these videos. And I'd love to have you as a new member of the community. That's it for this week, guys. Again, pretty, pretty happy with this. And I think my players' characters will not be quite so happy. But hopefully, the players themselves think it's pretty cool. All right, guys, I will see you again next week. Cheers. Cheers.